So for this video, we're going to look at the anterior and posterior drawer test for the knee. The anterior drawer test is going to be assessing the degree of anterior translation of the tibia on the distal femur. Posterior drawer is just the opposite, the degree of posterior translation of the tibial plateau on the femur. Essentially, we're looking at the uh, static structures and how they're restricting this motion, that being the ACL, which restricts anterior, and PCL, which restricts posterior primarily. Obviously, there are a few other components in there as well that are secondary restraints that also will be assessed. No, you should have already gained some insight into the degree of mobility or lack of mobility that exists in both of these as you look at both your anterior glide as well as your posterior glide as part of your manual arthrokinematic assessment of the tibiofemoral joint. So this really shouldn't be a, a completely new test, but rather it's the intention behind why you're using these. At this point, it's not so much of an arthrokinematic assessment as it is now looking at the integrity of these static structures, that being the ACL and the PCL. They can be done together in really the same position, which is why we're going to show them at the exact same time. The first thing you need to do is you need to get your patient into about a 90 degrees of flexion position. From there, we're going to use the side that's closest here. And really, you want to stabilize the foot such that there's not a whole lot of movement as you're providing your line of force. While some of the tests for the ACL and PCL do have a speed component to them, namely, for example, Lachman's, it's to be done quickly. For anterior and posterior drawer, these can be done at a normal speed as you're just assessing the degree of laxity or translation of the tibia. So let's start with the anterior drawer first. As you bring your hands into the posterior space of the knee, the, the fossa, uh, be mindful that the hamstrings are on lax, that they're, they're not guarding or protecting any motion. And then your thumbs can really rest just kind of on either side of the patellar tendon as you palpate for that tibial plateau. From here, you're only going to kind of lean back and provide that anterior directed force, keeping in mind that the line of the tibial plateau is both uh, towards you, but also up. So it's not on that straight horizontal plane. Any translation more than approximately five millimeters would be considered hyperbole. Now, in order to tell if that's normal or not, we would need to look at the opposite side as well to gain our reference. And that's true for both our anterior as well as our posterior drawer. For posterior drawer, we're going to be looking at just the opposite. Now we're looking in a posterior fashion, so it's down and back, again, not on that straight horizontal. Additionally, we can do this with two hands or we can use just one, both are viable options. Uh, typically, I'll use one. I'm going to stabilize with one hand. My right hand is my dominant side. So I'm going to approximate that here. And then I'm going to provide my force in that posterior direction. Again, I'm looking for excessive translation. One additional piece to be aware of is a degree of rotation may occur as well, or what we might call rotary instability. As we are applying that force anterior or posterior, if the medial side moves first and farthest, or conversely, the lateral side, also posterior drawer, the medial side moves first and, and farthest, or the lateral side, that clues us in that there could be some compartmental instability. That could be associated with meniscal pathology, ligamentous pathology, a uh, posterior corner injury, or something along those lines. And so that would require further diagnostic testing that would follow up your assessment of anterior and posterior drawer. Give these two tests a try, looking at the anterior collateral ligament and the posterior collateral, uh, or excuse me, anterior cruciate, posterior cruciate ligament, and let me know if there's any questions.